I met up with Dr. Judith Reisman, a world historian in the destruction of human sexuality. Dr. Reisman is recognized as an expert witness exposing the sex industry's hidden agenda. Playboy Magazine. sued you or you sued Playboy? No, Playboy sued me for libel and slander. And what happened? I won. She's fought the pornography industry for decades and even won a lawsuit against Playboy. So how did we get here to where we're at today? Because I don't think pornography has always been such an epidemic cancer within our society like it is today. No, not at all. Uh, we were, up to the end of the Second World War, a conservative Judeo-Christian nation. The turning point for all that was Dr. Alfred Kinsey, his book, Sexual Behavior in the Human Male, 1948. He was the father of the sexual revolution and therefore the father of everything that has come from that. And certainly one of the key things was pornography. Dr. Alfred Kinsey ushered the destruction of our nation's moral code with his books, Sexual Behavior in the Human Male and Sexual Behavior in the Human Female, known as the Kinsey Reports. The world recognized him as the leading scientific expert on human sexuality. The reports claim that humans were sexual from birth and that what we deemed as immoral sexual behavior was actually normal, thus making it moral. Once a biologist who studied gall wasp, Kinsey's obsession with sexuality led him to found the Kinsey Institute for Sex Research at Indiana State University. What people to this day are not aware of were the methods he used to collect his data. And I looked at the graphs that he provided, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34 tables, and I said, wait a minute, that's a two-month-old baby. What, how does he know a two-month-old baby did or did not have an orgasm? And then table 34, a four-year-old child, uh, 26 orgasms in 24 hours? That's an around-the-clock experiment. Wow, that's torture. That's torture, you bet. He also actually employed bona fide pedophiles to, uh, to do what they did to children for his so-called data. Kinsey wanted to prove that we are sexual from birth, so it wasn't surprising that he drew his data from pedophiles, rapists, and murderers. They were the perfect sample because obviously a rapist pedophile will have a skewed perspective on sexuality, convincing himself that his victim finds pleasure in the act of being raped. Using a stopwatch and a ledger, they recorded their sexual experiments, systematically molesting thousands of young children under the guise of science. This research was compiled in his books, Sexual Behavior of the Human Male and Sexual Behavior in the Human Female. He said, we, I had 196 pre-adolescents under 12, and he broke them up into six categories, and fainting, convulsions, screaming, writhing, you know, striking what he called their partner, that's somebody who's raping them, okay? And they were trying to get away, but he said they enjoyed it. They definitely enjoyed it. The research in Kinsey's books were partly based on the collection of data and confessions of a Nazi pedophile during World War II, Dr. Fritz von Balusek, who raped hundreds of children. After the war, the Nazi officer was charged and put on trial for the murder of a 10-year-old girl. They found detailed records of von Balusek's heinous sexual acts with children, revealing his correspondence with Kinsey. Dr. Kinsey, who was fully aware of the Nazi officer's atrocities, warned him in his letters to be careful and encouraged him to continue his research. During the trial, the judge said, I got the impression that you got to the children in order to impress Kinsey and to deliver him material. To his surprise, Balusek replied, Kinsey himself asked me for that. Now wow. that became the foundation for the sex educational structure that fed itself into what we are teaching our children right now as we sit here and speak. I venture to suggest that what we are putting into our books on sex education today is based almost fully upon philosophic guesses. And of course, it was the foundation of all the changes in our laws, the sodomy laws, the abortion laws, everything else. I mean, he's there. His handprints are on everything that deals with sexuality. 
from all these people, he was able to tell us, quote, the truth about ourselves, uh. the truth about what we were really doing behind closed doors. And he lied about our fathers, my fa father's generation and grandfathers. He lied about them because he projected onto them what he himself was doing. What he was struggling with. Yes. It didn't take long for Kinsey to deceive the world with his fraudulent data, convincing us that we were sexually repressed and ignorant to the truth. First, the media drank First the Kool-Aid. Uh, they were carefully taken care of by the Kinsey Institute to drink the Kool-Aid, okay. And then once they drank the Kool-Aid, yeah, the scientists, quote unquote, drank the Kool-Aid, and then the legislators drank the Kool-Aid, and then the lawmakers drank the Kool-Aid, and here we are. Essentially, what Kinsey did was he changed our belief about ourselves. This change of belief naturally changed our behavior. Soon, Kinsey's ideas permeated everything in our society, from our legal system reducing the penalty for sexual crimes and legalizing abortion, the media promoting his philosophy to the educational system, teaching children his views on sexuality. What's more, the pharmaceutical industry capitalized from the sexual revolution we saw the emergence of STDs, sexual enhancers, and the morning after pill. The divorce rate soared along with sexual crime. As a people, we would never be the same again. Our innocence was lost forever. Ultimately, Kinsey's fraudulent data led to the legalization of pornography. One of the virgins in college that read Kinsey and believed him was a guy named Hugh Hefner. Ah. Okay, yeah. So he's in so college. So Hefner was yeah, an and advocate for he, well, Kinsey's. he reads Kinsey and he says, "Hey, everybody's been lying to me. Uh, they've all been diddling around doing all this stuff, and I have been standing here being a nice guy. Forget it." He says, "I will be," and I'm quoting him, "Kinsey's pamphleteer. I will be Kinsey's pamphleteer." Really. So from there, he began to advocate for changes in law, and he created a magazine called... Playboy. Playboy, which then, he said, would reflect what Kinsey had found about human sexuality. In his fraudulent In his fraudulent data. data. America was educated by a pedophile whose work was labeled as science, just as Darwin was the father of legitimizing evolution. Kinsey was the father of legitimizing the sexual revolution and all that's based upon that today. Sure enough, Hefner was true to his word. Not only did he popularize pornography on a global scale, he also helped to legalize it. Uh, you know, we, I won a congressional investigation of Kinsey. Uh, at some point, we may, in fact, be able to get a, a public to be aware that they've been raped. The whole nation has been raped. That is what's happened to us. We have been raped, and you cannot expect to survive a rape without a great deal of, of illness, pain, and trauma. And we've gone through it. Now we've got to find a way to, to get out of it. So whatever happened to Kinsey? Well, this glorified psychopath eventually died of a slow and painful disease called orichitis, a lethal infection of the testicles due to years of brutal masochistic masturbation and other vile sexual acts. How ironic. The preacher of sexual liberation died from following his own message. Sadly, his destructive work continues to live on with his lies and, to this day, we continue to fund the Kinsey Institute with our tax dollars. Now for any man who's trapped in pornography, he must first realize that the root of the problem is based on a lie. A lie by Kinsey and a lie from the enemy of his soul. You need to realize you've been duped. You've been suckered because ultimately, Kinsey's purpose was to remake man into his image, which really wasn't a pretty one. <laughs>